In this video I want to take you through the process of making fairy lights in Blender 4.2. We're going to be utilizing the new Realize Instances node where we can change the depth of this node to alternate between two different lights on the curve. And we're also going to be stealing Default Cube's rope tutorial to get the twisting on there. And in general I'm just going to be taking you through the full process start to finish. The first thing I'm going to do is add in a Bezier curve and take it into Geometry nodes. Give it a new group, call it Fairy Lights. Then firstly I'm going to use a curve to mesh node and then in the profile curve I'm going to plug in a curve circle. Then I'm going to copy default cubes rope tutorial and duplicate this up, join them together. Add a transform node and move one, one radius away, so just one unit away. And then move the whole thing back by 0.5 units and you can see that sort of gets us this Venn diagram. Then if I plug that into the profile curve, what that will get us is essentially an untwisted rope. You can see it's just way too big at the minute, so I'm going to use a set curve radius node, plug that in, and it goes down to a normal scale. And now, what I want to do based on his tutorial again is just twist this based on the length of the curve. So I'm going to use a set curve tilt node, and you can see as I turn this, it will twist it along. I just need to plug in an attribute for the length that changes along the spline. To use this, I'm going to use spline parameter. And I'm going to plug in the length, not the factor here. I plugged in the wrong thing. And then if I multiply this value, this will sort of be the amount of twisting that we have. But you can see there's a problem at the minute in that we seem to be lacking resolution on the curve. And that's because we need to add in a curve resample node. And I'll set this to length so that it always works procedurally based on the um, actual length of the curve, not just a set number of points. And you can see that's way too much twisting now and turn this down to 50. That looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and group all these nodes, call it our twist node group. And if you want to, you can expose the parameter for the amount of twists that we want. And then you can change that easily as you go. And also I'm going to expose the radius in case I want to change the thickness. The next thing to do is now um, instance uh, points on the curve. And I'm going to do this before the twist node group because that converts it to a mesh. So if I add a curve to points node here, you can see we get some really huge points. I'm going to set the radius so we can see them a bit better. And I don't actually want to use count because as you can see, as I change the length of the curve, we always stay with the same amount. And that's not how um, I want my fairy lights to be. There sh it should sort of uh, be a constant distance between each light. So I'm going to change the curve to points node to length. Then join that up with the twist node. And you can see we get our points on top of our curve and now what we need to do is actually start modeling our actual fairy light instance on these points so i'm going to add a cylinder with 12 vertices keep it fairly low poly because this is going to be tiny and we're also going to subdivide it then i'm going to use some basic modeling techniques some loop cuts beveling uh, subdivision surface modifier and some insetting very basic modeling i won't go over it too much and now i'm just going to grab the top face uh, separate that out and then extrude that up and delete out the bottom face and this will be the sort of glass piece of our fairy light. Now I want to place an actual physical light in here so I'm going to go into edit mode select that bottom loop with alt and cursor to select it on there add in a point light and give it a tiny radius. Then I'm going to add in a glass shader to our dome material going to turn up the transmission on this material and turn down the roughness that just gives us a standard glass shader then I'm also going to just give a wire material to the other part of the fairy light. Now you can see if I go into rendered view we're currently in Eevee we don't really see anything I'm going to change this to cycles on the GPU and you can see we get some very noisy results and that's because it's trying to calculate caustics so I'm going to go ahead and turn those off And now I'll come into the shading tab because we're going to go into the node tree. And back in rendered view, I'm going to just add in a mix shader node. And I'm going to use the light path node because I basically want to say um, if there's a shadow ray, ignore the glass shader. Just make it transparent. And this will remove all the noise and you can see it lights everything up perfectly. It will no longer try to do caustics or any of that. It basically, as far as the light's concerned, the glass doesn't exist. And you could color this if you want to. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and color the uh, wire 
wire shade and make it a dark green and make it a bit more shiny by turning down the roughness. Then I'm going to scale all this down to match our wire. So I'm going to grab everything, put the cursor to the world origin, then change the pivot point to the cursor and scale down and apply the scale. Then I have to adjust the point light radius to something even smaller. And that should work pretty nice. So I'm going to go back into geometry nodes and now first of all put all our new stuff into a collection. I'm going to call it light and then I'm going to instance on points points we just distributed just by dragging it in from the outliner I'm going to plug in our light now I want to randomize the rotation of this so I'm going to plug in a random value to the rotation it's going to be a vector value and you can see as I change this we start to see some random rotation I'm just going to uh, play with these values making sure that nothing ever goes through the floor And you could always add more lights at any point by changing the length parameter. Uh, you can see I forgot to put the actual point light into the collection, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag that in. And now all the lights are instanced along the curve. And now what we need to do is set our material on the actual wire. So we're going to use a set material node after the twist, add in the wire material, and you can see we get that result. Now, this works in Eevee as well, because these lights are all just physical lights, not emission materials, so I can go ahead and tweak this in real time. Now I'm going to group up this light stuff into its own node group, just for clarity. And now what I want to do is, before any of this happens, I want to add a bit of randomness to this curve, a bit of displacement, because these fairy lights never really are perfectly smooth, so I'm going to use a set position and a noise and plug the color into the offset and you used to have to use a vector math subtract node but now you can just untick the normalize box and that will make everything centered around zero and now if you use a vector math scale node uh, after the color you can see we can turn down the effect and as I play with the scale on the noise that will increase the frequency so I'm going to use two vector math scale nodes because uh, we need to turn this down quite a lot for this scale and I'm just going to move it slightly up off the floor so it doesn't intersect it and just play with the displacement scale and you can see that just randomizes the whole thing a little bit I'm going to set the pivot point back to medium point as well from the 3D cursor now I can play with these handles normally and I'll group up this displacement set up and plug in the two scale parameters called one the noise scale now what I want to do is basically make a different instance every other point. So to do this I need to make a second light that's say a different color. So I'm going to duplicate the collection in the outliner and call this light B. And now I can make light B say a red color and light 1 a green color or something like that. And then I'm going to put both of these in a, their own collection called instances. And I'll just turn that off. Now back in our light node group, I'm going to replace the light with instances in the collection info. And then if I use a realize instances, turn off realize all and turn the depth up to one and enable pick instance, you can see we get the result we want. And to explain this a little bit, basically the new realize instance node looks at the actual hierarchy of the stuff you're bringing in. It doesn't just turn everything into points. So by realizing to a depth of one, what we're telling Blender to do is to look at the first layer of the hierarchy, the first collections, and make those instances. So every sub-collection becomes its own instance. Then, because we now have two instances, we have to turn on the pick instance to alternate between them. Previously, we weren't able to do this. We would just basically um, turn everything inside those sub-collections into pure geometry, which isn't what we wanted to do. Now I can go ahead, tweak the colors, play with the shape, get some nice renders in cycles, whatever I want to do. I'm just going to quickly go over how to animate these. Um, it's very simple. Basically, what I'm going to do is just animate the actual intensities of the original lights before they were instanced. I'm going to go ahead and key the power on frame 1 and frame 24, so they're on a one second cycle. And I'm just going to do the opposite keys on each one, so when the red's on, the green's off. And then if I 
control tab into the graph editor on the timeline. I can add modifiers to curves. I'm going to use the cycles modifier and making sure that I right click set the interpolation to constant. I can now drag out the first frame to frame 48 on both of these with the cycles modifier on and now we'll get some nice alternating lights. And you can preview these in real time in Eevee and then render them in cycles. I hope this was useful to you and I hope you learned something about Blender 4.2 and the new Realize Instances node. And yeah, I'll see you next time.